So they're the basic things to look out for when you're using this particular lacquer based putty. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and today I'm going to be doing a small tutorial about how to use Tamir putty or I guess any type of lacquer based putty um, on your models. Okay, so what I have here is this is the Tamir white putty. Tamir also do make a grey putty which is the original type, comes in the same type of tube. The difference being is the consistency is a little bit different. So the grey putty is a little bit coarser so it does tend to have uh, a bit more texture I guess than the white one. So the white one has finer particles in it. Now I've probably shown how to use this type of putty in other tutorials before but I guess we'll focus on this to begin with just by using it by itself. So when you open them up you can see that it's very much like a toothpaste type dispenser. You just squeeze it and it just comes out the tip. So we just get a, this is just an old blade here and just scrape a bit off the top. As you can see, I'll just cap it off again because lacquer putties do, just like lacquer paints, they do dry fairly quickly. So I'll put the cap on it quickly there. But then we have our, our putty and we just apply it where we need it. So I'll just cover up this particular hole here. Okay, so we just smear it across. Like so. You can see it just smeared across there. Now we could clean that up a little bit now if we wanted to. You can be a bit more um, uh, careful and not use so much. Since that's on a flat part, I don't mind it being a bit heavier like that because it would be very easy to sand off anyway. So we'll let that there to dry for a little bit but I'll show you what else you can do with the putty. So it, it's not only used straight from uh, the tube like that. As you can see when it comes out of the tube it's quite thick. We can also use this putty for filling in finer gaps. When it's so thick it's hard to get it into the gaps so we'll thin it down. Now the easiest way to thin it down is you use lacquer thinners. Okay, so here I've got the, uh, the GSI lacquer thinners, but you can use any brand of lacquer thinner for thinning down lacquer based putties. So let's just get this ready here. I have a little dish here. You can use any dish you like. These are the little uh, stainless steel ones which are made by GSI. Squeeze a little bit into this here. Okay, so you can see there I've got a dollop there. And then you apply the thinner in there depending on the consistency you want. So obviously you put in less it'll be thick, uh, you put in more it'll be super thin. So we'll start off with a little bit first and just put a couple of drops in here. So this, this is a trick I use for controlling thinners. I just put the brush up against the, the tip here and as the, uh, the thinner flows it'll travel along the tip of the brush can use droppers of course, which is perhaps a little bit easier. Okay, so I've got a little splash in there. As you can see it just towards the bottom here. And all we'll do is just, we'll just mix it up. Okay, can you see it start blending into the thinner now. Now as you mix it, you'll be able to see the consistency you get. It gets to a point where it's, it's brushable. It is still pretty chunky, so it will need quite a bit of work before it's fully mixed through. So a huge chunky bit there. Okay, so this is quite a thick consistency that's brushable. And you might notice that uh, GSI also has a whole range of bottled surfaces, which act a similar sort of way. The difference being is their surfaces have different size particles, so they, they rate them in like 500 which is equivalent to 500 grit paper and they get finer as the number gets higher so they go up to 1500 and this particular one here is probably close to a 1200 I guess it's quite fine. Okay so that's that's very brushable. Now this is the type of consistency you can use uh, for getting say a cast uh, iron effect on the side of a tank. So what you do is you do a stippling motion if you want to do that. Alright so if we use this as an example, 
You can see the section here that I've already started doing. It's already starting to go matte. It's not shiny anymore, so it's starting to, to dry. Now, if we were to texture this, you can just do this sort of stippling motion like this. So this is just giving you this sort of rough texture. Now, if that's too fine, you can always add a little bit more putty or when it dries, you just stipple a bit more on over the top. Okay, so that's for texturing like that. Alternatively, if we had it really thick, let's see if I can make that a bit thicker, we can get a really coarse cast texture. Like you see on some of those uh, really rough looking uh, Russian type tanks. Okay, so I just added a bit more there. Let's thin it off slightly. So I can get a brush wool, but still thicker than we had it before. Okay, so it's still it's pretty chunky there. And then if we apply that, we apply it in big chunks like this. It's the same sort of thing, just stipple it on. But because it's thicker, it's going to sit prouder. Now what we're going to do is after this sets, because it's going to have all these taller peaks, you give it a slight rub with some sandpaper to flatten the peaks. And it's amazing how uh, close to a cast iron finish it actually looks. Let's just try to stipple it on like this. So you can experiment with different brushes too. So obviously a stiffer brush is going to give you a coarser look. This one here is probably a bit fine for this sort of look, but this will give you an idea of what I'm trying to achieve anyway. Okay, so I still put it on like that. Okay, so we've got a uh, filled as per normal. We've got a thin one there for doing some texture. And then this one here to get a cast iron texture. And then over here, the other thing you can do with a uh, thinned out putty is you can use it for filling in smaller holes like this. Because usually when it's really thick, it's very hard to get them to actually seep into these holes. But since it's very thin now, we just drop it in there. And it'll fill those holes much easier. Now when it's thin, you may have to do a couple of applications. But at least you get it to enter into those, those holes. Okay, like so. All right, so we've got four examples happening here. What we'll do is give it a bit of time, let it dry, and then I'll show you how I clean them up. So in the meantime, to clean up your brush, just clean it with some lacquer thinners. So I'm just gonna pop a bit on my tissue here. So I've got a little wet patch, wipe it across. Now obviously you can have a little container that's got some thinners in it as well. That'll be a more thorough. But what I'm doing here is just a quick clean, which would be fine as well. So as long as you get all that out of your brush, it's probably a good idea to have a brush that's only dedicated for using with your putty as well. Okay, so that's clean. All right, I'll pop that aside, put it over here, and we'll be back in just a moment and we'll have a closer look at what's been happening here. Let's see if I can get a, a sort of closer up here. Just so you can see the details. Okay, so this side is straight putty out of the, the tube. This one is thinned down. This one is a chunkier version, uh, so less thin. And then this is thin, put into some holes. Okay. See you again shortly. Okay, so we're back. So it's been probably about 10 minutes or so. It all looks pretty dry. Now this section here, so I'll do something here. This is the part that I used the putty straight out of the, uh, the tube. This is thin down putty. This is the heavier thin down putty, which I've used to texture. And over here, I've used some thin down putty to fill in some holes. So what you notice here is this is dry now. 
but because of holes and because it's thin, it has filled, but it hasn't filled all the way to the surface, so that'll need another application. Over here, uh, it looks like there's a little bit of shrinkage, uh, but we'll sand that and we'll see what it looks like. And then all this stuff here looks pretty good. So I've got the little texture here, I might be able to see. It's probably not as tall as I would like um, to show you uh, sanding it back. So what I'll do is I'll apply some more on this one and this one, and I'll show you how I manipulate these two here. All right, so we've still got our, our stainless steel tray here. It still has some putty in it that's reasonably um, uh, liquid, but obviously it's evaporated a bit. And you can see it's a bit chunkier now, which is probably the consistency I would have wanted it for doing the, uh, the cast iron type texture. Okay, so let's just do that again. So over here, this is where I've been stippling it. So we'll do it again. Right, so we've got really pretty big chunks going on in there. Coming up to peaks. You'll probably be able to see from the shadows now that there's, there's pretty big peaks forming. So that's going to look quite a bit more realistic. <laughs> we're going to be sanding those big chunky peaks off later. All right, so that's going to be part of the texture. All right, so over here I'll apply some more, so fill in these little holes. And because it's already partially filled now, there's no more uh, space for this putty to travel through the hole, so it should just sit across the surface. Now, if it does shrink again, then we just need to do another application, but the third application should be the final one. All right, so that's all those holes filled in. I think there's one more there. Okay. It's a pretty chunky hole there, so you see it's sinking. All right. Let's just clean it, quickly clean off my brush. So again, let's just get a bit of thinner. Okay, there we go there. Cap that off, don't need that, pop that over here. Okay. All right, so the, just to imagine this is the thinner that we've applied, oh sorry, this is the putty that we applied which is uh, mixed with the thinner. Now the easiest way to sort of clean that up is to use some lacquer thinner over the top. So if I just get a bit of this, let's grab a little bit of thinner from here. Now even though that's dried, the lacquer putty will be uh, reactivated. Let's see if I can get that to, to focus on my hand. Just with some thinner. So as I'm brushing that across, that's actually getting soft again, and it's all coming off. Okay, so bear that in mind if you want to do a quick cleanup of some excess putty, and you don't want to sand off any details, then just by brushing off with a little bit of lacquer thinner. You see that, it's pretty clean. That's the easiest thing to do there. Now with this one, putty there is dry, so I'm going to get my little sanding block and I'm going to sand that down flat. Okay, so sanding block here. Now what I'm using is, this is a 240 and the 400 grit one. I'll be using the 400 grit. Okay, so the 400 grit is this one here. And we just gently sand across here. And basically, we want to sand this so that it's totally flush with the plastic. <laughs> so as you see there, you still see there's quite a bit of a sink mark from where the plastic has, um, has shrunk. So ideally, if we want to do this well, we'll apply another one so it fills in these gaps around the side. But just as this is a demonstration, what I'll do is I'll continue sanding this until the plastic is totally flat.
Okay, so it's probably quite noticeable from here. Now, because this is quite a large plastic piece, larger plastic pieces tend to have uh, greater problems with shrinkage. Okay, so the, the plastic has actually shrunk in and left a trough. Now, what I filled there, across the top here, I've been able to sand flush with the plastic. But you notice that it's still jagged on the bottom, which means this part still needs to be filled. So what you do is at this particular point, you'll apply it again, because it's a lot easier to see where the troughs are now, and you'll be able to fill that, and a second time around, you'll be able to sand that totally flush. Okay, so that's the basic way of using the putty. So this is for the filling the gaps. This particular thin one for either texturing or filling in really fine gaps. This one here for texturing, now if I just hold that at a particular angle, you'll be able to see how it's quite chunky. Now, unfortunately, because I've applied this quite a lot thicker, this is probably going to take an hour before I'll be able to, to sand it. But once this is uh, set, we'll just get the same 400 grit sandpaper and we'll just gently rub it across the tops to take off the peaks. And then that'll give us our textured um, cast look. Then over here, this is where we're filling in those small holes. And I can see now as it's drying, it's still sinking, so they'll need another application. So they're the basic things to look out for when you're using this particular lacquer-based putty. So again, you can use it straight from the tube and sand it down for larger filling. Over here, you can thin it down with lacquer thinners for texturing or for finer gaps. Here, we've uh, thinned it down to do texturing on cast uh, surfaces. Then over here, we've thinned it down so it can go into these really small holes. Okay, and then of course to clean up you can just use some lacquer thinners and you rub it over the top and you have it on a rag, wipe it off, or as you can see before I used a brush. So that's my very quick tutorial on how to use lacquer based thinners, in particular this particular uh, Tamiya putty there. Uh, but this will work with any of the lacquer based thinners, either by Tamiya or from any of the other brands. So there you go. So if you have any questions please leave them down uh, on the bottom. Uh, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Uh, if you have any uh, uh, ideas on uh, other applications for uh, the putty or how to use it, please let me know and because um, there's a good chance that I could have forgotten some of these, um, I'll look at uh, doing another video and addressing those. So thank you for watching.